first pro win, your third place at the Queen stage in Livigno. Is it what gave you the confidence for what you have done today? I don't know. It's uh, something unbelievable. Already on stage eight, I, I noticed I have good legs. I thought maybe I have legs to win a stage. The Queen stage was an unbelievable day. Uh, I I could already be happy just with the Queen stage with this Chiro. And today, already when I rolled to the sign-on, I, I, I thought to myself, I, I have good legs. Maybe I will win today. Uh, and then we I went from the beginning in the break. Uh, it was a little bit strange because we got caught by the peloton again. But I at one moment I decided I have to try again. And I did, and it worked out. Uh, your father rode the Giro before you. Did you think of him during this uh, 34 kilometers solo? Uh, to be honest, I didn't really think uh, about much. I just concentrated on the road in front of me. Uh, the roads were super wet and slippery. Um, so yeah, I was just in my zone and yeah. Were you asking what uh, Pogacar was doing behind? <laughs> well, I heard in the radio and uh, I was super nervous on the last climb. I knew I had to push all the way to the finish. Um, yeah, I, I heard at one point that uh, he's attacking, but uh, I was already two case to go, so I thought uh, I will make it. Is this the beginning of a big career? <laughs> Let's hope so. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I mean, it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? I do have to apologise. Georg Steinhauser has been to the same English school as Natan van Hooydonk. And uh, <laughs> very, very kindly let you know that you're not alone, Natan, as we know. And we understand always the excitement and the emotion. But we do have to apologise all the same, especially for any kids watching. Um, the start of a huge career. It's too early to say, Robbie, but it looks good, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, what a way to kick it off. I mean, yeah. When he was asked in his interview, you know, we, we know your dad rode the Giro before you do many years ago. Were you thinking about your dad on the way up the climb? He, he answered, you know, so no, not really, too focused. But I wonder if it ran through his mind to be able to just ring up tonight and go, better than you were. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I win, Daddy, quite literally. I thought it was interesting as well hearing him talking about the nerves in the final climb. And I don't know why I never think of nerves running through your rider's mind and body and guts as they're in this position. Mm. But I guess they are, they're nervous as well as trying to channel all that adrenaline to yeah. strengthen the power through their pedals. And I think when you're out front on your own like that, it doesn't matter how much you look around, it doesn't matter how much information you have in your ear, it doesn't matter how many signs on the motorbike at the side you get, you're not sure whether to believe them. Yeah. In my experience of leading the West <laughs> Division of Championships back in 2001, <laughs> very, very similar. Um, but no, you know what I mean? It's like he's, he's nervous because he's aware that there's a GC yeah. group where anything can happen. You know, it might be that UAE team member, it's from the very foot, light things up with uh, Rafael Mike for Bogatia that he wants to get a fifth stage win in the pink jersey. And so you would have been thinking the whole way out, I just need to maximise my lead, I can't afford to throttle off at all, whatever time gap I hear. And he only started to believe inside 2Ks, because at that point he knew it flattened off slightly, Pogaccio had only just gone on the attack, he had enough of an advantage. But I can see why, almost all the way up that last climb, he'd been thinking, I cannot rest on my laurels here. Well, especially with calms in the mountains, they are notoriously... Um, unsteady. We also have seen many times in the past where the time gaps aren't really reflective of reality, Nat. And, and I guess these are the kinds of moments you just can't train for. You dream of them, you may visualise them, but you can't actually train for being out front at a Giro d'Italia, can you? No, no, it's true. I mean, the time gaps, they go, they go left, right, left, right yeah, and centre sometimes. Yeah. Uh, so, and also, I can, I can kind of imagine what he must have felt like on the last climb. Uh, he, he would have looked at his power meter and, and thinking like, ooh, the last climb I was doing 20 watts more and now, ooh, the pain in my legs is a little bit more. <laughs> if Pogacar attacks, yeah, he can reach across mm -hmm. two minutes in no time. So um, I, can, I, can, I can understand the uncertainty, but uh, yeah, uh, he, he's, he crossed the finish line, uh, hands, hands in the air, so uh, hats off to him.